That's the feeling we've all had. Now new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. Hey there and welcome to another edition of Living Lightly. I'm Dan Derica, and it's been a little while since I had my last video up and there's kind of a reason for that. I was attending the Northeastern Missouri Hunger Games and here's a picture of that. Some of these children actually survived. I'm just kidding actually. Uh, I was using uh, a friend of mine's camera for most of my video shooting and uh, he sold the camera and so I was actually planning on getting my own camera anyway so it was kind of convenient timing and but it just took me a little while searching on the internet to find the right camera and I think I have and now I have my own camera so I can shoot whenever I want to. Uh, so that's where I've been and now I'm hoping to get back into making some more videos. I've also been really busy doing all sorts of stuff because it's planting season, I'm getting gardens in, I'm working on my vineyard and this video is actually going to be telling you about the vineyard that I've planted about eight years ago. It's an organic vineyard uh, which in itself is a really challenging thing in uh, northeastern Missouri and in the entire eastern part of the country. To grow grapes organically is kind of unheard of. So one of the major things that I wanted to do when I first came to Dancing Rabbit was to plant a vineyard and my idea was to eventually have a winery and I thought um, this would be a good use of our land here because we have these gently rolling hills here and planting and tilling land uh, Annu for annual crops on hilly land such as we have here is problematic because of the erosion problem and actually our land is classified as highly erodible. Um, our land is a great example of the destruction that happens when farmers grow uh, corn and soybeans year after year on land that's sl gently sloping like this. Uh, most of our topsoil has washed away. There's actually part of the parts of this hillside that had no topsoil at all on them. And here we have anywhere from like eight to ten inches of topsoil left. Grapes are one of the few crops that produces enough natural sugars to produce a stable alcoholic drink. There's a lot of uh, drinking of alcohol that happens here at Dancing Rabbit and also in the wider world and I thought uh, this might be a good crop for for Dancing Rabbit and I think it is suited to our the terrain but not necessarily the soil because the land has been run into the ground by conventional agriculture it's been a struggle getting grapes established here because they do need better soil and with poorer soil it just takes a lot longer for them to get established um, so that's been part of my struggle we have a lot of humidity here at, in this area in the summertime and basically that means tons of disease pressure here so uh, most vineyards that you see in the entire eastern half of the country are highly dependent on lots of pesticides to keep those funguses in check and they are very effective because um, they can eliminate most of these problems 100% but I can't use those and so it's been a struggle figuring out what I can do and what I did was starting out just planting many different grape varieties. I've planted about 20 different varieties here in the past eight years and I'm seeing which ones can grow in our soil and which ones can grow in our climate and conditions. Of the 20 or so varieties of grapes that I've planted in this vineyard, I would say about three or four of them have performed well and grown vigorously in our soil. These tree tubes here are replacement vines. Basically, I've gotten to the point where I'm giving up on a lot of the varieties since I had planted so many to begin with. I'm giving up on the ones that have just had enough chance to prove whether they can grow here or not, and they can't. So I'm digging those all up and I'm replacing them with varieties that do well here sort of converting the entire vineyard to just a few varieties that perform well in our conditions. You know, planting a, a vineyard organically 
Um, I have m so many handicaps, especially being here at Dancing Rabbit, because even organic vineyards can use fossil fuel and use a lot of other things that I can't do, can't use here. So um, it's been a struggle. The grapes have a lot of competition within their row with grasses. Definitely another way that you learn how dependent we are on fossil fuel and how it makes so many things easier is when you scythe this vineyard because it takes forever. I only scythe these strips right around within the grape rows and that will still take me working maybe a couple hours a day, maybe not every day of the week, but it'll take me at least a couple of weeks just to scythe those areas because I have to be careful scything around the grapevines uh, not to damage them and it's just a big project and this vineyard is only about an acre so a lot of vineyards are much much bigger than that so you can see here where I've uh, piled grass clippings at the base of each of the vines when I do my scything I uh, rake up the trimmings and I pile them around each vine as a mulch and that keeps down weed pressure it also retains moisture. I've got this drip irrigation line and the drippers are placed to uh, drop water right within that mulched area. And this is an organic alternative to herbiciding, which is what a conventional vineyard would do. They would just herbicide this whole strip here. And uh, this is an alternative way of keeping down the grasses and uh, giving the, the grape a little better chance against the competition of the grasses. Um, I don't want to use the herbicides obviously and I can't use them here because they're poisonous and they can also do a lot of damage to the grapes if, you don't, if you're not careful. Grapes can be a pretty water intensive crop if you look at sort of statistics of different alcoholic beverages. Grapes are pretty high up there in, in water consumption. I think that that's mostly because they're grown in desert regions or Mediterranean climates where there's lack of water and they need to do a lot of irrigation. Um, I need to do irrigation from time to time here as well, especially when the vines are getting going. That's the sort of a critical time, but after their root systems are well established, uh, they don't necessarily need the irrigation. So I put in this drip irrigation system and I uh, use the same system that I use for my hoop house. And I did a video earlier about my hoop house and the four season harvest and showed you my irrigation system there. I draw from uh, water from our swimming pond using a solar panel and a solar powered uh, DC pump and um, pump it up the hill into a tank. And then gravity feed this drip irrigation system. So I just have a valve in the hoop house and I can switch that on and then the water will come down here and I've got these individual lines I can turn on um, to water whichever row I want to water. And it does a really good job, it's, uh, it's really effective. And I just turn it on, let it go, um, and then uh, the, the grapes really benefit from it because right now we haven't had uh, rain for almost three weeks and uh, the grapes will stop growing if they don't con continue to get water and the fruit might not develop properly. So um, this has been a great system. The system also conserves water because it's a drip irrigation system and like I talked about mulching the vines, it drips right down onto the mulch so once it gets into the ground the mulch will hold the, hold the water down and uh, give the grapes the most time to make use of it. You know, in talking about the sustainability of this irrigation system, I am cognizant of the fact that a lot of the piping and everything is made from fossil fuel. So uh, my opinion is that you should use fossil fuel where it's appropriate and eliminate it where you can. So I eliminate it in trying to mow less in the vineyard, uh, to scythe, to have sheep running through there. Um, and then I also, of course, use organic methods and don't use chemical uh, fertilizers and uh, pesticides. And for the irrigation, there's not really a, a good alternative that's practical. It takes a lot of time to water by hand. So the drip irrigation not only makes things easier like it's in terms of labor in watering, but it also uh, limits the amount of water that you're using. You're just dripping and so you're not wasting water. There's not water that's running off the surface and, and running beyond where the plant can, can make use of it. So drip irrigation is practical for conserving water as well.
So I think that's a, an appropriate use of fossil fuel technology. I've also been doing this intercropping. Um, our growers co-op that just got started this year, we're growing different crops like onions and potatoes and squash and cucumbers in between the, the rows of grapes. And I did this a couple of years ago, planting uh, these crops on a large scale and it worked really well. So it's a great way to make use of the space that's normally wasted in a vineyard. And also I think it's eliminating a lot of that uh, grass competition because now the roots can extend underneath the crops that I'm growing here and they don't uh, take nearly as it's not as much competition with the uh, vegetable crops as it is with the grass for for moisture and nutrients. In the past I ran chicken tractors through here early on in the vineyards existence. I've added a lot of fertility, I've added manure, I've added humanure which is composted human manure that we get and I added that a long time ago um, as a way of just adding fertility. Uh, this land started out really really poor and infertile and there's still areas of it that are pretty that have really poor soil and uh, need a more fertility added. I've planted this white clover in between you can see it here and that adds some nitrogen you pretty much have to till it in for it to really get the benefits of the nitrogen but it's better I think it's better than having the grasses in here as far as competition. A few years ago I also had sheep in here there's a variety of sheep called uh, South Down Baby Doll Sheep and this variety of sheep is small enough that uh, they can't reach the vines and so they don't get up and, and nibble on the vines but they'll graze the grass and that would be my ideal for mowing in the vineyard here and they would love all of this white clover. Because there aren't a lot of uh, organic methods of disease control that are sort of like a a pesticide or something like that. You can use copper and sulfur, but they're minimally effective. Um, and I've used them before, but um, more important is to uh, sort of prevent, use mechanical methods of disease prevention by opening up the canopy. Um, you wanna get airflow and sunlight in here so that you don't have a lot of moisture sitting on the vines for very long. And also, you know, I designed the vineyard and laid it out so that um, hopefully I will get maximum drying of, of the moisture in the morning because uh, that's sort of when the spores will spread when there's water sitting on the vine for too long and the, the spores will uh, germinate and then they'll spread the disease around. So right now I'm just opening up the canopy. I'm also doing a little bit of uh, combing of these <clears throat> combing of these vines to uh, allow them to get maximum sunlight because right at this time of year they start forming these they throw out these tendrils and then they grab onto each other and um, if you open it up and comb comb the canopy like this uh, you can get a lot more sunlight in there and airflow going through but it takes a lot of time this is actually something that is commonly done in in all vineyards whether they're conventional or organic it's definitely hard enough to grow grapes conventionally in this part of the country, but growing them organically is, like I said, unheard of and possibly impossible. But I think when you take away the fossil fuel, when you take away the, um, the chemicals, uh, you're sort of stuck with the, the basics uh, and you sort of have to work with that system with the limitations that you have. And that's what I've been doing. And it's taken a lot of time and it's taken a lot of experimentation and a lot of failure, but also um, I think that I'm slowly evolving towards a system that's successful uh, with the right varieties and the right methods of organic uh, viticulture. And so we'll see how it goes this season. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's been dry enough and I've got the drip irrigation going. so. Um, those are kind of good conditions for raising grapes because the disease pressure is, is less when it doesn't rain. So I'll let you know how it goes later in the season. Maybe I'll be making some wine. Well, thanks for watching this tour and explanation of my organic vineyard. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share and like this video. 
and we'll see you next time on Living Lately. Today we're going to try it inside my house where it's already what the passive solar heat in here has gotten it up to like 70 degrees so um, it's nice inside and then we'll set it up. I've got all this sunlight here by this big bay window and uh, and we'll, we'll see how, how much better it works. Let's try it out. All right. Okay, so let's take this out of the bag here. It comes with a convenient carrying bag. And uh, it's got these legs that just sort of expand. And then you gotta uh, clip them together down here. 